Hey everyone, Chi Chi here with Spirit Readings and I'm so happy to have you here with me today. We are on segment three here of our Witchy Wednesday series. We're going through the Element Encyclopedia of 5,000 Spells, the Ultimate Reference Book for the Magical Arts by Judica Isles, and hopefully I'm seeing that right. And, oh, this book is so big, you guys. I love it. So, um, first we're going through, you know, a little background, a little history here. This is how spirit is leading me, you know, before we just dive on into spells, you know, I think it's very important, you know, to talk about traditions and customs and, and history, you guys, you know, um, it's something that I enjoy. It's something that I love. And it's something that I find is very vital and necessary, you know, um, to get behind, you know, the background, the scenery, you know, because sometimes when we're wanting to cast spells, you know, we're being driven by our ego or our emotions, you know, and whew, it can get, you know, a little iffy sometimes you guys so today we're going to look at magic today um these are both the best and the worst of times for magic on one hand there is currently less persecution of magical practitioners in more parts of the world than at any time since the rise of christianity this very book that you hold in your hands would once upon a time have earned reader writer publisher and bookseller alike a slow and painful death Materials once rare, craved, hoarded, and often forbidden are available and affordable, are affordable to more people than ever before. And think about that the next time you sip some mugwort tea, an herb that might have been that might have branded you a witch just a few centuries ago. Frankincense and myrrh, once the most precious, expensive commodities on earth, may now be purchased in any well-stocked health food store. Salt, packed with magic power, once extracted from earth and sea with terrible human effort, once very expensive and precious, is now so cheap and common that every fast food vendor gives away free packets by the handful. Although fewer people have private gardens, there is greater access than ever before to the botanical material that constitutes the foundation of magic. Some spells in this book refer to what may seem to be very obscure items and plants. Virtually nothing is unattainable, however. Once upon a time, a practitioner was limited to local botanicals. Now you can import living as well as dried plants from virtually anywhere on the globe for your private use. Do you want to access the power of Peruvian shamanic plants? Go on the internet. You'll be able to buy some. How true. Where botanical material isn't practical, modern essential oils and flower essence remedies reproduce alchemical methods to bring you the power of even more flowers available in a simple, easy to store, user-friendly, inexpensive form. Practitioners are unafraid to teach and to share information. I remember when booksellers didn't generally stock spell books. Now you can buy them everywhere. Classes are advertised in newspapers. You know, you don't have to be a member of an inner circle to discover metaphysical companions. There's little need to hide in back rooms, fearing arrest or worse, as in previous days. In industrialized nations, there is newfound appreciation for magical wisdom and traditions. Yet, it's also the worst of times in other areas, ironically, in those isolated communities where magical knowledge was preserved in such purity for so long. Many of our surviving magical traditions are vanishing as quickly as the rainforest, coral reefs, or any other endangered species. And that about made me burst into tears there, you guys. So, 
While some re-embrace a magical heritage rejected for so long, traditional practitioners who maintain those spiritual traditions for millennia lack similar privileges and protection. Like those vulnerable creatures of the Galapagos, having never before met attempts at suppression, they may never have developed the skills of subterfuge developed over generations amongst other more frequently oppressed people. As rainforests are cut down, mm, sorry guys, give me a minute. As ancestral lands are annexed, Traditional practitioner, practitioners and shamans have less, have less access to the botanicals they depend upon than ever before. Instead of open-minded, questing fellow magical practitioners eager to learn and share knowledge, the only outsiders these traditional practitioners are likely to meet are those who undermine their magical traditions and pressure them to abandon their own faiths and convert to others. Hmm. Every day, somewhere on earth, a traditional practitioner is pressured to abandon shamanism, divination, or some variant of the magical arts. Sometimes suppression is violent. Tools are destroyed. Modes of transmission suppressed. Shamans and leaders of magic are isolated from their communities, or as the Bible so eloquently says, put away. The stimulus to reject old magical traditions may also come from within, from a culture's desire for modern, for modern, modernity, I cannot say that word for some reason today, to appear civilized and rational. In other cases, magic and traditional knowledge are victims of war and political unrest. It is ironic to observe precisely which information appears to be vanishing versus what appears to be preserved for posterity. Once upon a time, very recently, Western magical adepts and elite scholars of magic alike favored the remote, pure traditions of the Himalayas and Indonesia. Scholars and adepts journeyed with tremendous personal effort to the far corners of the earth to meet with ascended masters, while simultaneously scorning magical, magical traditions found closer to the home as superstitious nonsense. Ooh, woo, ancestors don't like that now. Uh, today, it is those previously respected traditions that are rapidly becoming eroded and are vanishing for a host of religious, political, and environmental reasons. Closer to home, Celtic traditions, once reviled as foolishness, have been revived and energized by a massive number of new practitioners. The Romani people, terribly persecuted for centuries, scorned sometimes precisely because of their magical traditions, have recently reasserted control over those traditions and how they are to be perceived. Hoodoo, once beheld by both acad academicians and elite occultists with particular scorn, largely for race-based reasons, appears to have its survival assured. Thanks to the dedicated efforts of its own scholars, Zora Neale Hurston, Harry Middleton Hyatt, and Catherine Yarnwode, hopefully I said that right, Silver Raven Wolf, modern chronicler of powwow, once dismisses ignorant folk practices that were unworthy of scholarly interest, writes of scouring Pennsylvania nursing homes looking for old people with snippets of information that she may then preserve and share. Perhaps others will fulfill this role for other genres of magic in other parts of the world. It takes only one generation for information to be lost forever. And that gave me chills, you guys, from the top of my head to my arms. Woo! Ooh, the tingles in my head, the woo! How many traditions? How much hard-won human experience and accumulated wisdom from every inhabited continent, continent <laughs> have already been lost? 
this big book that you hold in your hand is but a tiny portion of Earth's magical wisdom. In keeping with the inquiring, questing spirit of magical practitioners throughout the ages, don't be too respectful with the spells in this book. If you find something that suits you or intrigues you, use it. If something isn't quite right, play with it. Tap into your own magic powers and continue the evolution of our magic repertoire. Wow, you guys. Okay. If you have thoughts that you would like to share on this, um, please do so. You guys, I encourage you know, people to speak up, speak their mind. This is a safe place. This is a sacred place. Um, and, you know, all I ask is that you be mindful and that you do be respectful, you know. But, um, you know, like it said, it only takes one generation for information to be lost forever. You guys, I didn't know my great-great-grandma Maggie. Uh, she passed, I want to say, in 1978, and I was born in 1982. So, you know, uh, she read tea leaves, and um, she quoted scripture from the Bible. Uh, my grandma said that she remembered her uncle, I believe Jack, getting bloody noses and Maggie would pray um, a Bible scripture over him and the blood would stop, you know, and uh, it's one that I prayed over myself, you guys, when I have had issues with bleeding, you know, from the PCOS and the endometriosis and for whatever reason, I want to say it's Ephesians. Where it says, I walked by and saw you kicking about in your blood. And as you lay there in your blood, I said to you, live. You know, there, there's power there, you guys. And, and when you put your belief behind it. You know, and... Uh, you know, a lot of the things that she did, I have no idea about, you know, other than stories that I heard, you know, from my grandma, and now my grandma's gone, so when I read that, it just sent chills through my head, through my spirit, down my arms and legs, you guys, like full body chill down my spine, and, you know, so much of this, you know, people have lost their lives, you know, just to be able to do what they do and be who they are and you know I fully agree you know it's never been a more magical time and in some ways it can be the worst but okay next Wednesday you guys we will start with part one here elements of magic spells so we're going to get in to how do you cast a magic spell uh, next Wednesday you guys if you are enjoying this series please leave me a comment and let me know you guys and like I said we will eventually get to the spells and you know everything but I I was led that this doing it this way was was important and necessary so I'm going where I am being led <laughs> I do not want to anger <laughs> my guides and everything you guys so um yeah please leave me comments you guys let me know i do take the time to read through all of the comments and respond and answer any questions that there may be to the best of my ability if you are enjoying this please smash the heck out of that like button that old thumbs up button you know give it the old razzle dazzle pizzazzle there 
and please subscribe if you feel led to. I would love and appreciate that so very much, you guys. I love seeing growth. I love seeing expansion, and I love being able to interact with you guys. It really does bring a lot of joy into my life. You know, you guys are a blessing for me, and I want to be a blessing for you in return. And if you do decide to subscribe, make sure you tap that bell icon so you get the ding ding when I upload new content. And please share because that does help me grow. That does help me get out there you guys are so wonderful and so amazing and I love and appreciate each and every single one of you and from the bottom of my heart I want to say thank you blessed be namaste and goodbye